maybe you're in the position where you've treated your room, but when you put up a microphone to maybe record some vocals, it kind of sounds thin and lifeless, almost like the room has sucked all the body out of it. It can be really easy to think that you've over damned your room in that case. If that's you, then this video is for you. Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Today's question comes from one of my email subscribers, a voiceover artist, who's worried that they've over damped their room after spotting a 90 hertz dip in their measurements, and now feels like their recordings sound thinner than they should. In this video, we're gonna unpack why over damping isn't the issue here, and why in the context of recording, a dip like this might not mean what you think. By the way, if you're done playing the guessing game and want step-by-step -step instructions on how to plan your treatment, my premium courses Build a Better Bass Trap and Absorber Placement Hacks for Odd Rooms will get you there. You'll learn exactly how to lock in your bass response and place panels so your mixes translate properly, all without wasting time and money. Links are in the description. Now let's dig in. A lot of you look at your measurements, maybe in Room EQ Wizard or in Sound ID Sonarworks, like the person who wrote this question. And when you see a dip, you might think, did you actually overdo your treatment? Or even worse, maybe you killed your low end response in your room. Of course, it's a completely natural conclusion to jump to, especially if your recordings kind of lack body and warmth. And that's why I think this email subscriber's question is really great because it touches on two very common causes for confusion in acoustics. One, on one side, the fear of over damping, and on the other, really understanding what dips in measurements mean in the context of recording. So the first thing to understand is that you can't over damp a room. In practice, that's basically impossible. And in fact, if you're still seeing dips and peaks in your frequency response measurement, that actually means that something isn't damped enough. In last week's video, which you can see up here right now, I talked about the common causes that really cause dips in the frequency response. So really it's standing waves, it's mirror point reflections, or it's speaker boundary interference. And all of these somehow, not quite the same in the same way, but basically through the process of interference, cause both nulls and peaks in the frequency response. And so if these effects aren't actually damped in the case of standing waves or reflections absorbed, then that will allow them to cause these interferences and thus you have a dip in the frequency response. So you can't really over damp a room because the more you damp these effects, the closer you actually get to an even a flat frequency response as you start removing these effects from the sound at your listening position. So the fear of over damping actually comes from a misunderstanding, from the fact that panels shorten decay and reduce the reflections, but they don't somehow erase frequencies across the entire room. That's just not how it works. So that actually means seeing a dip in the frequency response at a particular location in the room and then generalizing for the entire room is actually really misleading. That dip that you measured only exists at the exact spot of the microphone. So if you actually move the microphone, that dip might vanish completely. And that's why if you record at a different location in the room than your listening position, the measurements at the listening position are actually irrelevant. One other thing to keep in mind of course, especially when recording vocals, is that 90 hertz really is kind of at the bottom edge of the vocal range of humans. Even for very low voices, they don't really go much deeper than what, maybe 80 hertz? And definitely for female vocals, they tend to start above 100 hertz. So seeing a dip at 90 hertz, depending on your particular vocal timbre, might not actually have any impact. And don't forget, just how great the influence is of the vocal and microphone combination, right? So if you don't have a microphone that supports or even flatters your voice, you might perceive it as sound sounding thin. And then on top of that, we have the proximity effect, right? So depending on the distance 
of your performer to the microphone, of the source to the microphone, you might actually get a sound that is more full and rich if you're, if you're really close. All that said, if you do measure at the exact spot where you place the microphone for the vocal recording and you see a dip there, then it is very possible that it is a reflection-induced comb filter that causes thinness in the recording, especially if you're very close to walls and so those reflections coming off of those walls will be quite high in volume. So. If you suspect that your room is making your recording sound thin, first of all, make sure that you actually measure at the exact position where you record your vocal. If the dip isn't there, it's not the culprit. Second, you want to experiment with mic position and distance, and you might find that within a few minutes of just shifting a few things around, you can actually get the exact tone that you want. So you might solve this entire thing without actually tearing anything down or making any changes to your room at all. To wrap up, you can't over damp a room. Dips actually happen when something isn't damped enough. On top of that, measurements are location specific. So you have to test where you actually record. And always remember, microphone choice and placement can have a much bigger impact on the fullness of the recording than a particular dip in a measurement at a particular location in the room. And of course, if you've got any other issue that you want solved, but you don't know what to focus on exactly, make sure you check out my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. It's completely free. It's five steps, taking your room from completely empty to fully treated in the right order, right? So if you've got a particular issue that you don't know how to solve, maybe you've missed something in the process. Yeah, so check that out again, completely for free at the link in the description. And with that, Let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.